Editorial page editor Paul Jago is going to handicap the big Thursday decision for us. I Good am, to see you, huh? Paul. Yeah. Okay. All right. You've been along for this ride from day one, and right. that was a while ago. What What are you expecting Thursday? I really don't know. Uh, I fear that my analysis, the wish, will be the mother of the analysis. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I mean, I think that. Um, you know, the likeliest options are, one, are two. One is either a 6-3 sustaining of the, of the mandate and the law uh, with uh, Justice Kennedy siding with the law and then um, Justice, Chief Justice Roberts going over to write the opinion to make it 6-3 and perhaps mitigate some of the uh, breadth of mm -hmm. the ruling. Um, perhaps limiting it to health care, for example. The other one, which I take to be more likely, would be a 5-4 ruling in the other direction with uh, 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 overruling the mandate to purchase insurance, and then perhaps taking with it some of the major regulations like so-called guaranteed issue that an insurance company must uh, sell a product to you no matter what your health status, uh, and community rating, mm -hmm. which limits what, you can, what insurance companies can charge. Those two regulations, the Justice Department itself in its oral argument said, well, Supremes, if you overturn the purchase mandate, go over, overturn those two because they're so intimately um, in, uh, tied up with the purchase mandate. Let's talk a little bit about um, the way the law has been structured. Um, from the Obama administration's point of view, it is all of a piece, and the purchase mandate was the big pooling mechanism that essentially enabled a lot of the other pieces to happen. Pooling and financing. Pooling and financing, that's gonna, right. Basically, they want to take 25-year-olds who think they're going to live forever right. and say, you have to buy insurance, so you have to pay into the pool. I want to talk about a part of it that I think a lot of people don't quite focus on, which is, on the one hand, the court could overrule the mandate. They may, might even overrule the two pieces that you right. just discussed, but leave the rest intact. The rest is a lot. There are the subsidies there, and sure, there are the, the insurance exchanges, and the law still requiring uh, smaller businesses, businesses with people over 50, to comply. So this isn't over, uh, oh. if, if that is the extent of the ruling. Yeah, not by a long shot. I mean, my ideal outcome would be overturn the whole law. Don't try to micromanage this or that part of it. Just overturn the whole law because Congress, remember, did not include a severability provision. No. This is routine in most laws where they say that, okay, if one portion is overturned, the rest of the law stands. Congress didn't put that in in this instance, though the, Supreme, though the Justice Department did argue that it should be severable in its oral argument and in its briefs. So the court would be entirely justified in saying, you pass this unconstitutional provision, throw the whole law out. Now, I think the Supreme Court is likely to find that a little bit too much to swallow because of just how big the law is and how big a case this is. So I suspect we'll take out the purchase mandate, take off maybe the collar regulations, and then, as you say, mm -hmm. you've got particularly what I think are the heart and soul of the bill, the yeah. subsidies. Yeah. This is what the Democrats really want. They want to tax you, tax you, me, tax the, to, in order to redistribute money to hook the middle class on government for health care and make health care a much more of a political decision, universally so. If that happens, Paul, if that's the, the decision, does that mean that Inevitably, Congress next year is going to have to go back and fight over health care because otherwise the subsidies stand. The Republicans are going to have to step up if they want to do anything about that. Oh, I think so. And there's no question about it. Look, if the mandate itself goes down, just the mandate and the, even those two major regulations, then you still have a huge part of the bill that I suspect President Obama will stand up and say, it's still a great bill. Yeah. And we're going to fight to preserve this. Don't let the Republicans take it away. Um, and so we'll have a debate. The problem they'll have without the mandate, particularly if only the mandate, purchase mandate is overturned, you're going to have a dysfunctional insurance market with right. a lot of companies basically being told you must cover these things. That costs money. Uh, but we really don't give you any new customers. And I think you'll see a dysfunctional market that will, sp many companies will end up not being able to make it. So yeah. there will have to be reform. And short term, there's going to be just a tremendous amount of confusion, even in you know people like us trying to explain what is happening to the market after that. They themselves really probably will not fully understand 
which step they take next. Well, for the insurers, the, the, their nightmare scenario is get rid of the purchase mandate, keep the other regulations. Because we've seen in various mm -hmm. states that have done precisely that. What happens? Maine just repealed guarantee issue and community yeah. rating because it was killing their health care market, driving insurers out of the state. And that will happen across the country. Um, you'll see the, the, they call it a death spiral, where you just can't make the actuarial estimates that make it work. Yeah. you know, as a business. So Congress will have to act again, and we'll have a big fight over what to do.